Hello, Odafez podcast listeners. Welcome back. It's me, Jay, and I've got Angelo and Nancy with me today. We are finally getting back to our schedule regarding the anime preview and review cycle that we like to do. We're only one season late on it. It's okay. Yeah. Well, it's fi- it finally feels like winter, so it's okay, right? For this weekend alone. By the time <laughs> this goes out, it's going to be warm again. I know. That'll be nice. But at this very moment of recording, we are at fluctuating between the minus 40s of wind chill. So. Yeah. And we don't even have it that bad. I heard that Saskatchewan has it at minus 55. So. Oh, oh boy. Gosh. Yep. But. If we have any listeners in Saskatchewan, our hearts go out to you. Yeah. Stay warm. Watch some anime. Maybe something that we recommend. Who knows? Indeed. Yes. Stay inside. Outside is horrible. <laughs> Outside is trying to kill you right now. <laughs> ah. But do you want to help make a difference and clean out your space at the same time? Oh, Fest Charity Auction can help. Simply sign up, drop off your items, and let us handle the rest. You'll be making a positive impact on the community and your items will embark a new journey with a new owner. All proceeds will go towards supporting this year's charity, Mamas for Mamas. Submit your items at odafest.com slash auction. And Idol Festival registration is now open! That is, if you don't know, our showcase where you can dance and enjoy performing for an audience without worrying about being judged or compared. So come on out and have fun, meet new friends, and most importantly, enjoy performing. New for 2024, we will also have the option to compete if there are enough willing participants. So register now at odafest.com slash idol dash festival. Lots to do. We've in the last, in the past couple episodes, we have released so many of our applications for volunteering. We have the festival registration for idols now. We've got the charity auction, which is always one of my favorite things to see. Mm. Um, you know, it just means that Odafest is coming. It is we're this ramping year. up for it. It is We're happening. the same year. If you are not getting ready for it right now, you have a problem. Cosplayers, don't leave it to the last minute. It's happening. Don't worry. We'll still have like our T minus X days and weeks countdown once we start getting even a little bit closer for our cosplayer friends. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I i am well aware that there are many people keeping an eye on that schedule. Oh, yeah. And so let's keep our schedule with the first anime from the fall 2023 season. We're talking about Undead Unluck by David Pro, the same studio that brought you JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Undead Unluck is an absolutely absurd anime. It is completely bonkers. Yeah. Uh, For anyone who is not familiar with it, it is about a big, buff, undead zombie guy and a cute little main character girl whose power is to cast the worst misfortune upon anyone who touches her. Well, she actually has the power to take away someone's fortune, as in take away their entire life's worth of fortune. Because I don't, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but there's no such thing as a little bad luck with her. <laughs> no, not from the examples we've seen in episode one, anyway. Yeah, I would like, say the only good luck about the bad luck is that she brings a swift death. It is not like <laughs> magma erupts from the earth, but not so far as to immediately kill you. Or it's not so near as to immediately kill you, but just far enough so that your skin sizzles away. I don't know. A A banana box dropping on you out of a plane is potentially survivable in the worst way. Maybe. Not for most people. I mean, not not in like realistic world. It would have to be really weird for you to survive that, but it's possible that you could. 
I mean, they didn't super cover exactly what caused, did they? They, they didn't exactly cover what caused the, uh, the plane explosion, other than there was an engine problem. Yeah, do you but think they, the people on the plane survived? No, no, they yeah, no, explicitly said no, they, everybody on the plane died. Yeah. Everyone, oh. including her parents on that plane, died. But, like, in the animated sequence that shows it, like, there was something that either struck the engine or, like, fell onto it and immediately caused it to explode. So I'm kind of wondering if it's just, like, Final Destination powers, where she just causes really weirdly improbable things to happen. It It basically is that. It is... A whole lot of bullshit. Me and Dio, we were trying to watch this. We started watching oh. this while uh, it started airing back in October. And at first we were really down with it. Like the art style, the art style is pretty cool. I, I vibe with the I art agree. style. The overall animation, like the actual movement of the animation is ridiculously good. Like when your boy Andy is fighting it feels like his muscles are rippling at least when they're not getting sliced off or destroyed uh mm -hmm. it's so cool to look at uh the jokes they're a little bit edgy in a funny way like if if anyone's out there uh if anyone out there has watched a kamega kill a lot mm -hmm. of the humor is just like instant shock humor like oh andy just walked into the knife that was pointed at him. The knife mm -hmm. entered his chest, stabbed him right in the heart. And everyone's like, oh my god! Except he's like, what? Why? Why? Should I Should I be feeling something? Excuse me? And yeah, I mean, it's I, funny the first few times. So I feel like, having only seen this first episode, I know that uh, you and Dia watched, like, maybe made it to episode 5, but... I thought the animation was like fun. It's just fun, over the top, super expressive. Uh, it kind of feels like something, you know, Trigger would do, right? And like you said, it's the same studio that did JoJo's, so that totally tracks. The premise feels like it's setting itself up to be something that's just wild in a fun way. Uh, or, like, maybe something that's supposed to sideswipe you with some, like, heart-wrenching self-discovery journey or something. Uh, like, why not? Why not? Uh, I'm I'm sad to hear that you, you didn't pass, like, episode five. Like, it, you made it that far and you were just like, no. So, normally we don't. We try not to get too far into it, like... If you consider this, if you consider this uh, anime, if you judge it based on its first episode, I would say this is a perfect first episode. It is so good. Uh, mm. As the show went on, it just started feeling like your regular shonen anime battle bullshit. And me and Dio were not here for it. I have a oh. question because you said, you know, you like drop it after four or five episodes or so. But what at what point did you already feel like the trope was set in place and then you felt like you you weren't going to get anything else out of it? Yeah, what was so, that I don't think like it was going to be episode four or five. You know what I mean? Yes. So I was still down with it for episode two, but that's uh -huh. episode two is not as strong as the first episode. And that's normal. Like, if you look at any anime that has a really strong first episode, the second episode starts moving the plot forward, whereas the first episode was all about spectacle, right? That's like mm -hmm. Gurren Lagann, that is Sengoku Basara, that is Undead Unluck. So episode two, I was, I was letting it slide. Episode three, however, at that point, we had like a, a shadowy cabal of superpower people whose only job it is to go police other superpower people. And it's just like, okay, what's going on? And then they make it onto the panel of superpower people, and now they have missions to go fight other superpower. And it's just like, guys, mm. the the premise, the plot that was set up in episode two was really compelling. And then it was all thrown out by episode four or five. And I was just kind of done with it. I see. I see. Mm. Yeah. I could, I could see that. Yes. 
I very likely would have had a similar response if I had made it that far. But because we only watched one episode, I felt like, oh yeah, that sets up so much potential. I'm super disappointed to know that it didn't mm -hmm. follow through. I mean, some least... people really like like just uh, a monster of the week shown in battle anime. And mm -hmm. that's what this was setting itself up to become. Maybe it stayed that way. Maybe it didn't. I don't know. I feel like the over, like the, the impression I got with the overarching story, like what it reminds me of would be something like Witch Hunter Robin, where there is like a monster of the episode, like of the week kind of approach to it, but there is an overarching, like you mentioned, like the cabal of you know the 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 government agency Man. shadowy organization i forgot exactly. about witch hunter robin i loved that show that was a good show and i feel and and i feel that it follows the like based on your description of having watched a few more episodes it feels like there is a similar arc which is not the worst arc i think it's just um you know if it's not directly comparable then you know you can still do it in a good way or a bad way and maybe it's just Undead unluck is slightly unlucky in itself that a it doesn't bit, yeah. quite hit the right notes for you but that's unfortunate yeah i i mean like i i also remind like remember things like full metal alchemist full metal alchemist early on is kind of a monster of the week to start with and like you get this idea about like the whole like you know alchemy and uh the government and and but it's not until ooh a good little bit on until you get into the whole like uh, uh, like the 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 seven deadly sins characters, the like you know what I mean. Like there's a lot more going on behind the scenes, but early on, it's you're just ba they're just fighting like random alchemists. It's true, and, and some and the monsters and, and stuff. So, so it's kind yeah. of me and Dio. Maybe me and Dio kind of dropped it where it was just trying to like establish and develop the characters a little bit more, introduce yeah. a, a supporting cast. Mm -hmm. But, eh. It's, that's yeah, really all I have is, to say about it. Just eh. This is one of those cases where, like, you just won't know unless you want to commit to sitting down and watching the whole season and seeing where it takes you. Yes. I don't, I don't know if I'm ready for that, just knowing that that's kind of what to expect for the first five episodes. It could get better. Who knows? It I could. have I, I legitimately haven't looked into it. Maybe some rainy day. Maybe some frigid negative 35 hellscape of a day. I can put it back on the TV and see what happens, but... On the tail of not this day. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I think that there could be something there. It's from the examples I mentioned. It's a tried and tested method, but you do have to lead the uh, experienced viewer along for longer than that. It can't be like I really think of it as a show that I would have liked. When I was 14. Yeah. Probably, yeah. If I yeah. were 14, I would be, I'd be all over this. I, I, and I don't yeah. think that's, to be totally clear, that's, it's not a, not bad, a bad thing. criticism, right? Like, I yeah. just, I just think that maybe what Angelo is saying has some weight to it too, where it's like, if you're an experienced and you, you have curated your tastes in an anime then maybe perhaps that this is not quite for you at this time anymore that everything think... that they're doing is done well i've just seen it before that's what i felt I... like yeah. yeah and i think that speaks to kind of just what the tastes of this group have matured into not necessarily a negative criticism just mm -hmm. that we've kind of outgrown this particular just, execution just say it just say that we're old. Just say it. We're old. We're old. We're, old. <laughs> we're turning to dust. Freyrin stays the same age, but we crumble. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's okay. Odafest is committed to, you know, cryogenically keeping us frozen. Odafest uh, is the Weeaboo retirement home. <laughs> what happens That's is Odafest should... staff, once you're an old enough weeb, you just become one of us. Mm, true. Is that how that works? Well, I would I would rather become staff old and staff. old instead of a pig. <laughs> I yeah, have no desire to turn into a pig, but 
uh, <sighs> my understanding, the next, all you have the, to do is not eat raw pig liver. Yeah. Apparently. The, the, next, the next anime being Butareba, the story of a man turned into a pig. Um, they weren't exactly subtle about this. Dude I could have just not watched a, this. I mean, they yeah, delivered we, what they promised. But, they were not subtle. Uh, the one thing, and quite frankly, I feel like the anime has uh, has this as an overarching theme. Maybe the man was a pig the whole time. Yep, totally. He was the literal and figurative pig. Mm -hmm. So this is this is an isekai where a ma a guy uh, who is just... uh, self referentially a a college science nerd. He calls yes. himself that. Yeah. Uh, just wakes yeah. up in a pigsty among uh -huh. pigs barely living and then some cute maid girl who happens to be telepathic is just like oh i can hear your thoughts i'm going you're to adopt a, you now yeah. yeah she's like i can tell you're not really a pig but you're just in a pig's body but i can't change i only have telepathy powers i can't change you back into the man you once were which the entire let's be honest first was episode... a pretty low quality man is a male insert fantasy where he gets to be unabashedly the perv that he is, and she just accepts it and is super submissive about it. And I'm like, oh no! Yeah, you know what disgusting. this made me feel like? What? Uh, uh, it, it kind of felt like a uh, ugly bastard themed adult uh, entertainment media, except sanitized made... for a younger audience. Yeah, they made the ugly bastard like a cute pig. Yeah, this is this is the problem I really have with it. Uh, like, she okay? There's it's it's a it's a two sided thing, right? The first part is that this girl has no other friends to hang with that are normal people that aren't mm -hmm. like that. She can telepathically read everybody's minds. I get that. And she can't find someone who's nice to hang around, who's not a fucking perv all the time. But For she's real. just like so servile. Like that yes. is her entire it's, personality is to be subservient. It's disgusting. It's, yeah, like straight on top up, it's of disgusting. That, hold on, hold on. It is weird. Second, I got a building. second part. Okay. Second part. This does nothing to like raise good men. It does nothing to redeem him either. Like, no, no. But I'm saying like, like, don't get me wrong. It's it's definitely a redemption arc storyline where he becomes less of a shithead. I mean, you are you are, are just you sure? saying that. I am. Yeah. Hoping. Are you sure it's a redemption I'm storyline? I'm not watching this to find out. I'm just. Yeah. This, I don't but what think I'm this saying is, is that's what I hope for because I'm telling you. Like, I'm not saying that anim I'm not saying that media should raise anybody, but it should not necessarily inform your morals. I am just saying that this genre as a whole i'm attacking the genre through one anime one episode of one anime fucking just like it, it it's just like kind of like a like a like a uh it, 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 it's creepy apologism. oh it's escapist fantasy oh it's absolutely like that it's uh, fact, it's, it's apology it, it, yeah it, you're basic it, it's it's being a creepy apologist is a being a uh, uh, I don't think they're being terribly apologetic about it. One of the no, no, best no. The, the, the term apologist ever. is someone who defends that kind uh, of Mushoku like, Tensei or jobless reincarnation. The whole point of the story is about the main character being this disgusting, perverted guy, and about him like rehabilitating himself, becoming better, and like that is that is actually the whole theme and 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 plot of the story and it's actually like two seasons in we're like rudius you're you're a fucking pig but god damn every now and then you get a little bit better just a little bit better every now and then you're just and we're here for it i don't think we're gonna see that here i don't think we're gonna see I that i don't here. need to stick around to find out i just I, you know what i almost that, hope yeah. that he's a uh, that he is just who they are and you could almost just get like your rage uh, on, you know, just being like, hate this dude, hate this character, hate I, this storyline. 
I have to call out some of the notes that we took as we were watching oh, this. Yeah. Jay literally said, I started cleaning my desk instead. Yeah, I took <laughs> off my headphones. I stopped looking at the screen and I started cleaning my desk because I noticed that I had some stains on it. Then I wiped down my mouse and my keyboard. <laughs> Good for just, you. Yeah. Good desk hygiene is a good thing. Oh, oh my just god! Just like, bro, I don't need to watch this. I have, I don't know. If you want to talk about the, if you want to talk about the the, uh, the etchy side of things, like I'm an adult, I can find that kind of entertainment elsewhere. And uh, we live you know. in a post Ishizoku reviewers uh, society. There is oh, yes. no etchy That's that true. anything can do that. That is like it, it's it, you don't even try anymore. Don't even. I, I, I got, Ishizoku it, it, reviewers it, had more and better in one I, show. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say that, like, unless it's banned in your country or you're underage you didn't go far enough or whatever, <laughs> I'm just going to say that. Go go do something else with your time. You know that, uh, that there's <sighs> etchy as a genre. In my opinion, is a dead genre. What's the point? I don't get it. Either give, either do something good, watch something good, or go watch adult things that are also good. Mm. Without <sighs> beating a dead horse, I will also comment some of the notes I took, which was, as someone who doesn't normally drink much, I almost need to drink to forget this. Immediately followed by, oh, there it is. There's the panty shot. <laughs> uh, several <laughs> cocktail and drink emojis. It's not even, like, subtle. Or, no, like, it I, I was going mm -hmm. to use the word classy. I'm like, when is a panty shot ever classy? Um, no, it's just not. It, that one was just like, hello. <sighs> it the was the vending oh, machine. Oh God, it's got it. Do you think the? Do you think because we never watched that one either? Do you think the dog one was worse or the? Oh, or the dog one was one? definitely worse. Dog the one dog was dog definitely one was worse. So much worse. One hundred percent. So much worse. All right. Uh, uh, and then the vending Angelo machine. Said, yeah, it's a relatable. more relatable character. Yes, and yep. everyone knows how badly I hated the vending machine. <laughs> I felt. I felt that. The vending machine isekai was more nuanced and original than this pig <laughs> anime. Okay. So oh, I uh, take it for what you will. If you want to watch it, go ahead. I'm done talking about it. <laughs> yeah, let's go on to the next one. Uh, so the next one that we watched was Dog Signal, which was a slice of life. Uh, basically about a dude whose ex-girlfriend, like, well, whose girlfriend at the time breaks up with him and then a couple days drops off a dog and just says, here you go, this is yours. Yeah, yeah what and the stop fuck? Being so How lonely. does that happen? Like, like no, just, seriously. That is the strangest thing to do. Dogs are expensive. You do not just simply give it to your ex-boyfriend. I mean, yep. maybe that's why you give it to your ex-boyfriend because that's like exacting a form of revenge. That's rude. That's super rude. That's rude it to your ex-boyfriend. That's rude to the dog. That's rude to everyone involved. Yeah, and you're like, you're inflicting poor dog ownership on an innocent life. Like, it's just not, no, just no. So there, there was a lot of just like question marks going on when this, when this was playing out. I hate the uh, art style, first of all. I really do. I, the art style the animation, is so weird especially because like and childish the opening the opening had a very artistic art style i wasn't so 100 percent on it but you know it was very artistic it was neat it was interesting the mm -hmm. ending also had a pretty good art style we actually watched the whole anime and we saw the ending the anime itself looked like uh looked like some 2000s tumblr art it looked like, it like looked somebody like club it looked like somebody oh. who took uh, manga it, and, and anime Shonen drawing Club? lessons directly from those how to draw manga and anime books uh, of the early 2000s. I remember you know those? one frame where I was just like, wait, wait, little, literally what is happening in this frame? I don't understand what is going on. And this this show is animated in PowerPoint. It's got like two frames per second. So the fact that I was able to just see this whole still image and not comprehend it was okay baffling. so there were several 
times where I was about to ask Jay if his computer was frozen or if his stream was stuttering. I mean, that happened in a different show entirely. Yeah, it happened in a different show once, but it yeah. wasn't this one. It didn't do it in this one. That's just how it was animated. Uh, it also suffered from, to me, uh, uh, how much longer to go in the showism. Yes. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I asked at the 21 or 20 minute mark. No, you were asking at the was. five was minute like, mark if we could just end this now. <laughs> Yes, that is yeah. true. About five minutes, and I was like, "Can we skip this?" But no one said anything else, and I was like, "Okay, fine." No, I was here. I was here for mark. torturing Jay. I was here for and it. Then, yeah. At, at, at the nineteen or twenty minute mark, I was like, "Is this over yet?" And I moused over to see the tracker. And, and there was five, there was five more five minutes. minutes left. There was five more minutes left. So okay, there were. It wasn't all bad. There were a couple of nice things about it. Like, you know, if you were ever curious about owning a dog responsibly, this is probably a good introduction because they introduce a couple of actual useful concepts to you. But it also was very queer baity because it was just yes. like, oh, okay, that's not just I queer baity. Just I don't know how to explain There's it. Like light I, I was BDSM. Just... Yes. Yes. But not but in also... like not in an actual etchy way, just in a this is completely inappropriate kind of way. Like it doesn't match the vibe <laughs> of the show at all. No, yeah, it like didn't. It, it didn't match the tone of the show. It it felt like they were just trying to shoehorn it in for some reason. They were putting it like, in for the Fujoshi market. They were like, maybe. guys, oh, this, this anime is going to absolutely fucking bomb. Because you, have, If we don't appeal to the gays, we have nothing. You have you have essentially like Doberman versus great, or, or sorry, Golden Retriever energy. Like it's definitely, it plays off that trope as well. It and does. Then, um, to be completely clear about the light BDSM thing, Doberman boy puts a uh, you know golden retriever an actual boy collar. like yeah in an actual collar in order to demonstrate how a dog feels about leash control. I'm like, I'm pretty sure they're a human being. They can conceptualize it on their own in their brain. Yes. Unless you know, Buddy literally lacks empathy. But you know what I mean? Like there was a whole scene where there was tons of people in the park who were like. Don't don't is, look, sweetie. Yeah, it's, we're it's we're creepy. going home now. Yeah. So that's yeah. two creepy animes in a row. Don't waste your time. Me. Don't a waste little, your time, dog signal. Mm. The dogs weren't even cute, which is ridiculous. I love dogs. The dogs in this anime were drawn so weird and derpy. Yeah. Correct. You can't point, even watch this anime for the dogs. My favorite offhand comment that I made earlier was it looks like someone animated a wiki how on how to train <laughs> your dog. Yes. yes. If you've ever Including seen a wiki how very poorly article. framed anime characters. Oh my yeah. god. It was yeah. so bad. I, I I I would assume that you know what's weird is that because of the animation being so poor, I'd be like, just read the manga. <laughs> is there even a manga? If there is, I'm Probably. sure it's fine. Yeah. Like the a lot of our uh, uh, issues are that this is an anime. Mm -hmm. Like, I still don't think that the source material is probably that good, but all the, 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 the criticisms of the anime, the shitty pacing, the, the, the art style, all that, uh, they're anime problems. Yeah. And it's maybe better in a manga if there is one, but I mean, maybe, maybe, no. I was don't. kind of looking forward to an anime series about how to train dogs and how to be like a good responsible dog owner, but no, no this, this is I don't know if yeah. I don't know if this can be it for me. I will say I think this is maybe uh, like it can't be the first uh likely in its um topic, but I think there's an upward trend in Japan about adopting pets such as dogs. And ca like, I mean, people are always like, oh, but Shimo Yunus exist. They already have dogs. It's like, I don't know if you Very know different. this, but animal, like, like keeping an animal, having pets in Japan is still kind of rare outside of rural areas. When me and Dio were in Japan, 
we saw maybe only two or three dogs outside of a park. Yeah. Like when it's we not... went to Yoyogi Park for a day, we saw a whole lot of dogs there. People were mm -hmm. having their dogs all over the place in Yoyogi Park. Outside of Yoyogi Park, we found one dog just walking around with their owner yeah. in, uh, in Kyoto. Mm -hmm. Friendly yeah, little I bugger. Think, I think I saw more dogs, more pet stores than I did True. actually people walking their dogs around in mm. the city. God, going yeah. across the pet stores and seeing just a window full of kittens or puppies was so good. Oh, God, yeah. Let's not turn this into another Japan episode. <laughs> Let's not. Okay. Anyway, we were kind of disappointed by this one. We need to Sorry. talk about non-animals. We need to talk about something manly. We, we need to talk, to talk about, about dead cars. Ass. Dead Car animals fueling vehicles. Dino juice. Running cars. We go to the pits. We bolt tires that were roasting in the sun onto the fuselage. So we're talking about overtake. Uh, this mm -hmm. is uh, an anime about Formula 4 driving. And it was pretty good. Yeah, you know what? I thought I thought it was a little bit light in the very beginning, and then it just starts sucking you in. Like, you start feeling like you're immersed in the actual uh, the scene, the subject, the story. It was good. It was pretty well animated. Animation uh, was really I had a nice. comment... I had a comment about, like, in the first, like, couple of minutes, I was like, hmm, nicely animated, reasonable use of CGI. And Jay was like, I don't know if it's reasonable yet. Let's see. And, like, I don't think they ever overstepped the line of yeah. unreasonable use of CGI. So I think that was really good. Uh, I will say, out of all of the beautiful animation, one thing that was inconsistent that kind of annoyed me was in the first five minutes or so, you see a dude. He's the main character, I think. And he's drinking out of a Starbucks cup with like a plastic lid on it and then he and then and then the cup comes away and he's got like milk foam on the top of his lip I and wanna... I'm like that's not what but it's cute though <laughs> yeah, it's, it's endearing totally cute. to the main character sure it's wanna... just not something you get if you have that kind of a drinking cup lid on I just wanted to point out um so you mentioned the main character and this took me as kind of a surprise. I, I I agree that I think it is the main character, at least in the first episode's perspective. I don't know if they change perspectives yep. in different episodes. Yeah, exactly. But based off of our initial preview, and I think anyone's general assumption... Yeah, I thought the you driver would think it was going to be driver. the main character. But mm -hmm. the, the main character, at least from episode one's perspective, is a photographer, a, photographer, a journalist... Uh, and yeah. he's not even a sports journalist, it seems. He's just no. a photographer, a professional photographer of some kind, maybe a freelancer. But mm -hmm. it actually gives you better perspective, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah, it, it gives the audience a really good character to latch on to because of the introductory aspect of introducing the audience to formula racing. Yeah, and he's much, and it's not even... I would say... I felt the story wasn't, again, first episode, it was not heavily into, they weren't just trying to show you every lug nut on, you know, the car. They weren't trying to get you to become an audience member of, uh, to become a fan of the sport immediately. Like, they weren't trying to push you in any way other than to move the story along with character development in mind. And I will say they didn't really try to set up a story premise either. They they did a little bit. There are hints of it here and there, but they didn't really try to beat you over the head with it to get you invested in the story the same way that uh, Undead Unluck did. Mm -hmm. So I kind of appreciate the more subtle pacing. Exactly. And uh, I just I just want to keep watching more, not necessarily because I'm interested in formula racing, but because I'm interested in all the little glimpses they've shown so far. Mm -hmm. uh, what I will say is I kind of want more female characters to show up. Ah, you were you were really uh, looking at all the race queens, eh? Mm -hmm. And yes. that, maybe that nice reporter lady too, the boss lady. Yeah. Yeah, I think you were lady. just uh, not distracted enough by all the actual real world car companies. 
and brands. Yeah, so there was a lot of branding, like legit branding, like this Honda was the in there. This is most yeah. product Subaru. placement yeah. that yeah, I've there was a seen lot. in an Bosch. anime the, since the, Tiger and Bunny. Yes. Like the, the car that um, the boss lady was driving slash possible girlfriend uh, is a Jeep Renegade. I noticed, like, like it's. It, 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 I don't remember if there was badging on it, but I'm so I. It probably does have badging on it because Subaru was there, Honda was Honda, there, uh, Bosch, uh, Dunlop, like the tire company. Dunlop. Yeah, like yep. they and they weren't like Whack Dono or So Me or that was Cam legit Om. to shit branding. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I noticed any shit brands. Like even the helmets were properly branded. Yeah, yeah, if they were, if they were something that would have a brand, but they didn't want to show it, they just There's... hit it. So, for example, yeah. his camera. I don't think they have a camera sponsor for this show. They do not. So they, they do didn't not. do. I noticed that, but they didn't do again. No Nick Kong, or you yeah. know what I mean. Like they, they just hit it. They just like did not show a, a exactly a badge for it, a, a yeah. tag sponsor but so anything kind that of could look that. like it was it was a sponsor in a uh formula racing environment was pretty much mm -hmm. just there it was kind of cool one thing that i, I loved about it. this is that it got the energy of the pits exactly right exactly oh, yeah? right where you have like big corporate teams you have like smaller independent teams and then you have some people who are just being like absolute goofballs and weirdos yeah. It is. It transported me back to like a Windsor weekends in the in the pits of the Grand Bend Speedway or the the Toledo Speedway. It was. It felt nostalgic. It felt very nostalgic to me. That's good. It was great. Mm -hmm. They did their research. The cars look good. The yeah. and all the cars are the things that are monitored are uh, modeled in CGI. And then the animation of just the characters in 2D style look good. Uh, there's really nothing I, I felt like I could pick on it. Um, no. There's real potential I in the show. It was... It's kind of a sleeper. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. I think so. From from a I first episode so. perspective, we there's a lot of sleeper potential. We weren't that enthused going into it just because we just we just watched fucking pig isekai and, and dog <sighs> thing. And we were just yeah, we like, were. we we were feeling like Miyazaki. We were like, oh God, anime is a mistake. Not and just so anime we, is a mistake. Anime is God's greatest mistake. We were re-energized by this show. Yeah. We were re-energized by it. Yeah. Anime it's definitely it's worth an has episode rights. two. It's, it's worth anime an episode two from, from episode one. So I liked it. I would watch more. Yeah. yeah. And then to cap off uh, our review journey is Free Ren Beyond Journey's End by Madhouse, one of our favorite resident studios, I think. Uh, God, I think Madhouse is has... finally back on top, baby. Holy yeah. shit. Madhouse has had a fucking shit run for the last like decade, it feels like. I can't remember a single thing since like Redline that I watched from Madhouse and was like, oh, this is the best animation I've ever seen. Finally. Finally, they've regained gained their crown. They're back, baby. They're back, baby. So, Angelo and I have been keeping up with this one this season, so we're pretty up to snuff. Uh, so we weren't sure if we wanted to just rewatch the first episode, but I think after all of the things that we had just told you about, we needed to cap it off with a good one. So Jay did get to experience first mm -hmm. episode with it's us. So good. It's and so good. Can I, I can say, I can I take the lead on this just because I haven't seen it? Yeah, absolutely. Because you, you, two, you two have kept up with it. Mm -hmm. um, I would say from the preview, the initial preview that we had for this, I recall that I wasn't that interested in the setting because it's kind of this generic Western fantasy setting. How dare Don't you? Don't really care too much about it, I'll fight generally you. speaking. And then <laughs> the animation is, it's subtle. It's not bad in any way. But the qualities that make it good aren't things that are flashy and aren't things that are like it's not like it has six thousand frames per second somehow. Like like it's not ultra silky smooth. I think in some aspects, uh overtake might have actually been nicer in some ways. But 
I do feel you? that like the character writing has true nuance. Like you meet them, you're you're, you're really kind of living the uh, the character of Freeran, um, seeing her perspective because they what they give you of all the characters, including Freeran herself, is kind of like it's not much but it's enough to actually keep you interested in the characters, even if it's not, you know, a deep, deep well that you're drawing from. Um, the The actual storyline, um, or the, sorry, the story premise of a long-lived elf, I think is nice. Um, it reminds me of some other media that is not necessarily in this setting. Um, it, it reminds me of things like Eve No Gcon a little bit, where you see like it's the outsider's perspective of being an immortal or being artificial in a sense. I know I'm kind of getting long winded, but I like it. Like I can see where I I like it enough that I would consider watching it. On the uh, like, it, I haven't watched a lot of anime again in a while. But I, I would keep this on a short list to pick up because I think there's a lot there. Yes. So there is so yeah, much there. I agree. There is so much there. Uh one comment that came to mind while we were watching episode one is that since since we've been keeping up with the season as it aired, going back to episode one was really nice because I can absolutely say that the animation quality has been extremely consistent throughout. Uh, you don't get that first two or three episodes that look really nice, and then the animation quality just like drops off for the rest of the season. Uh, it has been consistent. It's been similarly paced. So it, it feels very consistent throughout. So I have heard things about how the production of this anime got started apparently yeah. after reading the first volume of the manga the director behind this anime just yelled out into the ether animators assemble he loved it so much that he put a dream team together he basically got the avengers of anime production together in Madhouse to make this anime. And it feels like it. It is ridiculously good. Every episode is like OVA quality. It is insane. Yeah. And so, you know, they have a good storyboarder online on, on the team when you see how well paced every episode is. Like, I think a lot of people underestimate how important storyboarding is when you're planning out episodes uh, within a series of episodes, but it's so well done. It's so refined. It is expertly made. Like, every now and then, an anime comes along and people never stop talking about it, never truly stop talking about it. It has been 25 years since Evangelion first start, first aired, uh, around the same time for, uh, like Cowboy Bebop, Trigun, uh, Gurren Lagann aired in two thousand seven, and people still talk about it now. Free Ren is going to be like that. It is going to be one of those anime where in twenty forty four. There's going to be some nerd on a message board somewhere being like, hey, guys, remember that anime about the autistic elf girl? That one was good. <laughs> I think it's going to be us, actually. In 2044, one of us will be pinging the internet about that time free run was great. We'll be pinging the retirement home. We'll be like, hey, guys, I found my old hard drive and it's got that elf girl anime on it. Let's... Let's put it all on the screen and see what's going on. And then we'll be old man hater and old man Himmel watching our cute elf girl who hasn't aged a day since the first time we met her. I think I if it's the 20 uh, year period, it will have gone by like no time at all. Probably. Ugh. But also, I will freely admit 
I wasn't sure if I was going to cry in the first episode again because I did the first time I watched it. I did. It still hits. This has been the fourth time that I've... I've read the manga. I watched it on my own. I watched it with Dio. <laughs> and so this is the fourth time I've seen the first episode. And it still got me. Yeah. It, it hits. <laughs> it, it impacts well. Yes. God. If you... The one thing to understand about Freedom, it is not an action anime. It is not a shonen battle anime. It's when not they a say fantasy chapter. drama yeah, adventure, it's... they yeah. mean those three things in particular. But it's also not like a replacement Lord of the Rings by Japan. No. Just to be clear. Mm-hmm. It is mm-hmm. a story around the main character and the supporting cast. It is a story explicitly about them. Do they get into battles? Do they get into fights? Occasionally. Every now and then. But Mm -hmm. those aren't the point of the story. Yeah. The point of the story is not the epic dramatic battle. It's actually all the stuff around that. And you can tell even just off the premise of episode one. It's not about the great grand adventure that they went on for 10 years to defeat the Demon King. It's about all the stuff that happens around that like i in in some of the flashbacks that she has about her her party mates it's about the moments at the tavern the moments around the fire the moments getting caught by mimics uh it's not about the fights and and it really tells a more human and emotional story around that and and around like the connections that she was supposed to be feeling throughout the grand adventure and it, it just continues along that line. It's like a good D and D campaign, where it's not <laughs> yes, just the one about that the takes fights. Ten years. No, but it's a lot of people think about D and D and tabletop games is like I just want to get to the next fight. I want to get to the next fight. That's not what makes a good campaign. Not for me, anyway. Not for most. Maybe people, for some I people. I, I don't know. Some people just really enjoy the dice rolling. I think. I guess. I don't think that's me though. The clicky clacky rock. Yeah, the ones you're not supposed to munch. <laughs> Forbidden hard candy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was a good... Uh, it, it, uh, unlike many of our review episodes, that was a good one to end on. Good mm-hmm. uh Usually energy. we end on the trash and like free run. Yeah. Usually watch I'm angry. You full owe of it anger. to yourself to watch it. 100%. Yeah. And I would say that Overtake is also a really good little surprise anime at least again from first episode standards didn't it, like even if you don't think you're gonna be in the formula racing surprised super fun i mm-hmm. don't watch sports anime yeah this one if i, I have some free time i might pick it back up hey but it's like a minus 40 40 billion outside we could probably just go and and do some of that right now yeah ah yes you know what you shouldn't do in minus 40 degree, degree weather don't go outside. Go to check the mailbox. Don't take your dog out for a walk. <laughs> don't, don't don't take watch dog your dog's signal. owner out for a walk. Also uh, that. that is we went out epi- to go check the mailbox yeah. and our eyelids were freezing shut. Yep. Yeah. Hate it. Yeah. Mm-mm. No, don't do it. But it's yeah. dangerous for your health. That's, Stay uh, warm. All the anime we have for you this episode. Thanks so much for listening. We'll get right back onto the preview train very soon so keep an ear out for that until next time bye bye take care